Welcome to Physics 2100 at Cal State LA. I'm your professor, Dr. Bijan Berenji. This is video number three, motion in two and three dimensions. Motion in two and three dimensions. We will explore this topic now. This may be useful in example such as an object in free file while moving horizontally. Also in more general situations where the motions need to be described in X, Y, and Z. We will study uniform circular motion relative motion as well. The displacement in higher dimensions may be expressed as a vector. Delta R equals R2 minus R1. The position may be expressed as a vector with X, Y, and Z components that are functions of time. This is R equals X of T I hat plus Y of T J hat plus Z of T K hat. We can describe motion using vectors. So in figure one, uh, we have a, a vector r1 and a vector r2, and uh, the displacement vector uh, is between points between the, t the, the tip of vector one and the tip of vector two. The displacement vector may be described by r2 minus r1 equals x of t2 minus x of t1 i hat plus y of t2 minus y of t1 j hat. So we can take the velocity as the derivative of the position vector. So we have x prime of t, y prime of t, and z prime of t. Okay, so you can have uh, average velocity, which is related to the displacement vector. Also, the acceleration vector is given by the time derivative of the velocity vector. And in terms of the components of the acceleration, if ax equals dvx dt, ay equals dy dt, so forth. Uh, projectile motion is a common source of problems in mechanics, so we can Im imagine a uh, coordinate system with x along the direction of motion on the ground, y upwards, so the, the gravitational acceleration is pointing down. Then you have v equals v naught cosine alpha um, and so forth. So the projectile motion, the following for, two formulas are useful to know, but you should be able to derive them from the previous equation. So you have a maximum height and a horizontal range, which can be derived. So, uh, projectile motion, so we can find the, the range of a projectile uh, if you know what is the initial velocity and the initial angle and the gravitational acceleration. The figure plots the y versus x and uh, so also uniform circular motion. So we can express the acceleration as uh, v squared over r, where v would be related to the angular velocity as v equals omega r. And uh, then the acceleration would be expressed as a equals omega squared r. So 
So uniform circular motion. So if the period of uniform circular motion is t, then the angular velocity may be expressed as omega equals 2 pi over t. So we may have uh, tangential and centripetal components of the velocity. Um, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. We'll see later that omega equals d theta dt as well. Derivative of the angle. So in circular motion, we may have an angle theta and uh, r being the radius and so motion along a circle. Um, the velocity vector is tangent to the path and, and perpendicular to the acceleration. Relative velocity. A reference frame can be thought of as a point of view from which measurements of position, time, and velocity can be made. The velocity of a body P moving with respect to a reference frame B, V, P, B, can be related to the velocity of the body with respect to the reference frame A by the relative velocity of B with respect to A. Equation 15. This is the one-dimensional case. We'll now examine five examples from this video. Example 1. A particle moves so that its position as a function of time in SI units is given by So we have r of t equals to i hat plus 4t squared j hat plus t k hat meters. Recall that i, j, and k are the unit vectors. So uh, we may ask, what is the velocity as a function of time, the acceleration as a function of time, and what is the shape of the particle's trajectory? So to obtain the velocity, we take the derivative of the position vector. So we obtain 8t j hat plus k hat meters per second. Example 2, we may show that the maximum height reached by projectile is V sine alpha naught squared over 2G. So we may have Vy equals V0Y minus GT. Um, so we may we saw, uh, use the equation for relating the velocities to the acceleration G. So we obtain Y and then we obtain consequently uh, Y in terms of alpha naught.
So in figure one, So we may first express y in as a function of x. So you are given x of t. So we were given in that in figure that x equals to 50t, y equals 100t minus 4.9t squared. So we eliminate, we put t in terms of x, so we have y a function of x. Example three, uh, what are H and R, the maximum height and the range? So we may substitute, use the formula h equals v0 y squared over 2g. Uh, we obtain h equals 510 meters. So we need to find what alpha 0 is, the initial angle with respect to the ground. So that's 63.43 degrees and we obtain the range as 10, 1020 meters. So, example four, we're giving an example that certain neutron stars are believed to be rotating at one revolution per second. So, if a star has a radius of 20 kilometers, A, what is the speed of a point on the equator of the star? So we may convert kilometers, 20 kilometers into meters, 2.0 times 10 to fourth meters. Omega equals 2 pi radians per revolution times one revolution per second, 6.28 ra radians per second. We can get the velocity, uh, omega r equals 1.3 times 10 to fifth meters per second. Example four, what is the centripetal acceleration of this point? So the solution is that A acceleration A equals omega squared R. So substituting values of omega and R, we obtain 7.9 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared. Okay, so example five, 
Imagine a person is walking toward the rear of a train at 0.1 meters per second opposite the motion of the train. The train is moving at constant velocity of 1.0 meters per second away from an observer on the platform. To an observer on the platform, what is the velocity of the person who is walking? Solution. Let VPO denote the velocity of the person with respect to the observer, VPT the velocity of the person with respect to the train, and VTO the velocity of the train with respect to the observer. So use the equation velocity VPO equals VPT plus VTO. So the VTO uh, is negative one meters per second moving away, and VPT 